It's been a combined 20 years for both these squads since a quarterfinal has been in their sights. But tonight, one of those droughts ends while the other continues. Is the Division III second round boys basketball matchup. Number three will be versus number 14, Fairfield Lolo. Hello everybody, welcome to DET Sports Media Live on YouTube. My name is Christopher Saunders, Dave Thurl on the camera. And for people, if you've never seen the gymnasium of which the game is being broadcasted and also the home of the Wilby Wildcats of the NVL, this is the Reggie O'Brien Gymnasium and George Torado Court here at Wilby High School in Waterbury, Connecticut. Both these teams coming into this game, the second round, Wilby had a bye, so they did not play in the first game on Tuesday, first games, I should say. Fairfield Lolo did defeat Killingly 58 to 52 to be able to get to this point in the second round. And as I said before, both of these teams combined have not been to a quarterfinal in 20 years. It's been nine years since Fairfield Lolo got to a quarterfinal. That was back in 2015. And at the time of which, before the CIC went to divisions in 2018, they were in classes and Lolo was in double L. And for Wilby, it's been since 2013 that they've gotten it, you know, basically by the second round. And that was against Watertown, a game of which they won. But also, too, for Wilby, this is another factor as well. The Wildcats have not won a playoff game in eight years, going back to 2016. They've been to the playoffs a couple times, but something's got to give. Somebody's streak is going to end, while the other, as I said, will continue. About 23 seconds of the pregame warm-ups, as you see both teams on their respective bench. You've got Wilby on your left side, and you've got Fairfield Ludlow on the right side. And we're just moments away from the starting five, the national anthem, and then the opening tip between these two teams, and the winner will take on either West Haven or Waterford to be played on Monday. Divisions one, three, and five will play their semis on Monday. And you've got two and four playing their semis on Friday, or correction, the quarterfinals, I should say. Uh, the divisions one, three, and five will play the quarters on Monday. The semis for two and four will be Friday. And then the semis will be Tuesday and Wednesday for all of the divisions to lead up to Mohegan next weekend. Currently, you, you hear right now the PA announcer go over the rules and regulations for everybody, including fans, coaches, players, broadcasters, and everybody alike. As the gym is slowly starting to pile in. As you can see, the stands are pushed back just behind the benches. But the stands of which we are broadcasting the game just about center court, slowly starting to get people more and more. It's a semi-early time. Typically, a lot of the games have been at 7 p.m. during the season, but this being a 6.30 scheduled tip. Once again, as you see, Wilby on the left side, Fairfield Ludlow on the right side of your screen. And the first team to be announced will be the number 14 of the FCAC, Fairfield Ludlow, coached by John Daly. First one to be announced, number two, junior Charlie Mahoney. All FCAC third teamer. Followed by number 10, Junior Charlie Jones. Number 14, Juan Castro Strabina, also a junior. Then the last two seniors. Number one, the first team all FCAC, Tate Mahoney. And also number 11, senior Porter Davis Watley. So once again, the starting five, both the Mahoney brothers, senior and junior, Jones, Watley, and Strabina. These are your starting five. And now the number three seed, the Wilby Wildcats, coached by Alan Piccolo. 17 and five, lost in the semis to Holy Cross in the NBL tournament. Number 33, senior Joseph Nieves. Senior, number one, Junis Luna. Number five, a thousand point score to second team all NVL talent, Hakeem Truhart. Number 23, the big senior, Lewis Howard. And lastly, the 19th all time scorer for Wilby. Scored his thousand point against Seymour in the quarterfinals, second quarter. Brandon Beeman, a first team all NVL talent. So again, the five, Truhart, Beeman, Howard, Nieves, and Luna. And for Ludlow, you have both the Mahoney brothers, Jones, Watley, and Strabina. Now we'll pause and rise. 
for the national anthem. Beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. Moments away from the opening tip. Number 14, Fairfield Ludlow. And number three, the Wilby Wildcats, the officials for tonight's game. They are David, or correction, it's going to be Mike Thibodeau. Also have Reeves and Michael Sheehan. So again, correction, David Thibodeau, Mike Reeves, and Michael Sheehan. Those are your three officials for the game tonight. 14, Ludlow, three, Wilby. Fairfield 13 and 8 on the season. Their best record since the COVID year when they were 16 and 4. And if you did not know, COVID canceled the CIC tournament. Some teams, in terms of the girls, already were in their quarters to semis when that happened. For the boys, some had played one game or did not even play at that time. Lolo was actually had a bye, and they were going to be playing in that second round game. And because of COVID, did not have that opportunity. And then following the seasons after COVID, you had an 8 and 12 and also a six-win season to follow in 2023. But now, you think about it here, 13-8 and eight and a good season for Lolo. They're trying to carry on into their quarterfinal for the first time in nine years. At the center of the court, you have Junis Bell Luna. And you've also got Tate Mahoney. Ludlow in their blue, will be in their white. Both teams are ready. And the second round of Division Three is underway, the opening tip will be won by Ludlow, and here we go, right to left in your dial, the team in blue, Ludlow. Charlie Jones, top of the key, now gives it over. Watley, swinging around the three-point line, back to Jones, guarded by Nieves. 10 seconds into this first quarter, no score in round two, division three. Three by Mahoney is good, that's Tate Mahoney. And Ludlow gets first blood, it's three nothing. Ludlow ahead of Wilby. 30 seconds into this first quarter. Let's see how the Wildcats answer back. Beeman a thousand point score. And we'll have an offensive foul on Wilby. That's gonna be on number one, Junes Bell Luna. And the reason why Luna is starting and not Jarena, he injured his elbow in the semifinal. And because of that, that was against Career Academy. And because of that injury, he's out for the remainder of the year. 7.20 to go, three nothing, Ludlow going in hard. Luna commits the foul. At the line for two is Charlie Mahoney. That's gonna be Luna's second. And another thing for the Wildcats, their bench is not very deep and losing a starter like Jarena puts a player who typically comes off the bench to now have to start. Tyler Padilla will be waiting to come in. At the line for two is Mahoney. First free throw is no good. A low 0 of 1 substitution. Tyler Padilla will be coming in. Now it was going to be Junis Belluna. So Fairfield struck first with a 3 from Tate Mahoney, the first team all FCAC talent. And a very, very good player. Second free throw, first missed, and the second's missed as well. But an offensive rebound by Strabina. 3 by Mahoney again, missed the 3, a 2 and done. For Ludlow, here goes Wilby on the opposite end, left to right on your screen. Truhart, 
near the stripe. Missed the shot. Offensive rebound by Beeman. Here's the second chance. Howard has the ball, number 23. Now Beeman from the left corner. And it's going to be missed off the back iron. Trying to fight for the ball is Truhar. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Ludlow off the right knee of Jones, number 10. So Wilby has on the court Howard, Padilla, Beeman, Nieves, and Trueheart. And you've got both Mahoney's, Jones, Watley, and Strabina for Ludlow. Trying to feed it to Padilla. Padilla with the left hand, a little bit too strong, trying to fight for it. That's Ludlow on the defensive side. That's Watley, number 11. Jones will bring it up. Fairfield is up 3-0, and now make it 5. Driving in the left low post is Jones. So a 5-0 run for Fairfield Ludlow, the 14th seed coming into Wilby. 6.30 to go in the first. Hakeem Truhart with the possession of the basketball. Wilby has not scored in this first quarter thus far. Nieves outside to Howard. Howard working in. Howard goes back outside to Nieves. Fakes out Mahoney. Now Beeman, he'll try from the left elbow, and it's good. Nice shot by Beeman. And the Wildcats finally get a made basket. They're down by three, however. 6.08 to go in the first. Strabina gives it to Watley, guarded by Howard. Now Jones, who has a made basket. They find Mahoney, and Mahoney contested by Beeman. Doesn't matter. It's 7-2, Fairfield ahead of Wilby, the three seed. 5.50 to go in the first. Howard to Nieves. Nieves driving in the right hand just a little bit too easy for Joseph Nieves. It's 7-4, back to a three-point lead for Fairfield Ludlow. Feeding it to Watley. Watley working on the big, no. He gets his offensive rebound, and then Padilla's right there somehow makes a play defensively. He just stood his ground. Hakeem Truhart with Wilby down, it's picked, and it's off of Hakeem Truhart. Nice defensive play by Fairfield Ludlow. Ludlow took the lead early, 3-0, with a shot made by Mahoney, Tate Mahoney. And Ludlow has not looked back early on, 5.20 to go in the first, 7-3. Ludlow leads, or rather 7-4, I should say. Ludlow leads by three. Now 5.13 to go in the first quarter. Jones outside the three-point line, which Strabina as well. They find Mahoney, Tate Mahoney. Jones has a made basket, trying to throw it up high to Tate Mahoney, and it's just a little bit too high. Howard will be inbounding closest by to Akeem Truhart. This is a low, low team that did struggle to end the season. It was one and seven to finish. But they won the game against Killingly, a travel by Wilby, possession back to Fairfield on low. This low, low team as I mentioned before, going one and seven to finish the year. Lost to Trumbull, Stanford, Ridgefield, Staples, Ward. All teams ranked in the top 10. So those are not bad losses by any means. 448 remaining in the first quarter, 7-4. It has been for some time. Ludlow struck first with a three from Tate Mahoney. Going outside to said Mahoney. Guarded and an errant pass thrown away by Ludlow. So both teams kind of having a little bit of trouble possessing the pumpkin. A substitution coming in. Gavin Mertz, the freshman, is in. Out is Strabina. So Mertz getting his first appearance in this first quarter. Hakeem Truhart, the point guard, as I mentioned before, Jarina, primarily the ball handler, out for the year with an injury. Hakeem Truhart, nice pick by Padilla. Truhart works outside. The fate shot's a little bit too short off the back iron on the right side. Mertz just into the game, 4.15 to go. Ludlow up by three. Charlie Mahoney. Back outside, Ludlow being very patient, working through their passing. Mahoney's shot no good to the hands of Truhart, and then it slipped away back to Ludlow. In the corner, Mertz. Mertz feeding, right side, no good. Padilla still hit up high. It's going to be Ludlow again. No, and finally a foul was called. That was Watley, number 11, now at the line for two. And that's on Tyler Padilla. And his hand's just up, but the failure by Wilby to box out and giving opportunities to Ludlow. It's allowing them some opportunities second and third. The line for two, 
quarter, Davis Watley. And he'll miss the free throw there. So Wilby has yet to attempt a free throw. Lolo has missed all three. Trying to make one here on their fourth attempt. They're up by three, trying to make it four. The free throw is good. First made free throw by either team, especially for Lolo. They missed their first three. Four point lead for Lolo. 3.40 to go in the first. Chris Sarns alongside David Edward Thurl on the camera. Padilla goes back outside to Howard. Now Akeem Truhart. We got a two by Beam and a two by Nieves. That's all the scoring that's been for Wilby. They've been cold in this first quarter. Charlie Mahoney, guarded by Nieves, gives it to Tate Mahoney. Mahoney to Jones. Jones with a nice move, feeding Watley again, but Tyler Padilla defensively in the left low post staying strong. Nieves fakes out one, but they call a travel on Nieves. And nothing seems to be going right for the Wilby Wildcats. Again, the officials, David Thibodeau, Mike Reeves, and Michael Sheehan. So Fairfield Lolo in the blue, going right to left on your screen with Davis bringing up the pumpkin. Tate Mahoney back to Jones. Now Charlie Mahoney, number two, the third team all FCAC player. Tate Mahoney's open from the right side. Missed the three. Nice offensive rebound by Charlie Mahoney. They feed it to Watley, and Watley off the glass. Nice job by Watley. He's got three. It's 10 4 Ludlow. 2.48 to go in the first. Beeman, top of the key, has one of the two made baskets, trying to feed it to Padilla, and it's last touched again by Wilby. Now we have another substitution. Aaron Baker's coming in for Padilla, so switching in terms of the size here, going a little small, but adding maybe a tad more speed. As Wilby trying to increase the pace here, they have not been able to do that. 2.35 remaining in the first, 10-4. Ludlow leads. They struck first with a May 3 by Tate Mahoney. And now a travel by Ludlow. So, so far with 2.30 to go in the first, we have 14 points combined between both these teams. 14 seed Ludlow and the three seed Wilby. As Jones is out, Timmy O'Neill is in. So now we've seen both teams go to their bench twice. We've seen Padilla and Baker for Wilby. We've seen O'Neill and Mertz. Two freshmen getting opportunities here in a Division Three round two matchup. Hakeem Truar against the trees. They feed it right side, rather left side, and it's good by Aaron Baker. Only the third player to score for Wilby, but they're down by four, 2.08 to go in the first. John Daly in his 10th year with Ludlow, watching on the team in blue, that's Ludlow. The FCAC coach of the year. John Daly, finger roll no good by Mahoney. He goes to the left side, strong by Charlie Mahoney. He's got four. Leads the team in scoring. Tied for three is Tate Mahoney and Watley each with three. 12-6 in favor of the team in blue. Fairfield Ludlow with a 14 seed. Trueheart spinning, goes outside to Beeman. Now Nieves, 22 on the shot clock, 135 on the game clock. Baker just into the game, made a basket. Howard yet to score number 23. Now 128 to go in the first. 13 on the shot clock. Picked by Howard. Short had it picked again. Regains his possession and gets the and one. A possible three point play for the senior, Akeem Truhart. And the first team foul for Ludlow, and that's on Watley, his first. Teams first. Wilby has three team fouls. Two coming from Luna, the other one coming from Tyler Padilla. Thousand point scorer, Akeem Truhart, second team all NVL player. Left hand stroke is good. So Wilby's first free throw of the game is a made one, and now it's a three point lead back again. For the team in blue, Ludlow. O'Neal gives it to Mahoney, now Tate Mahoney. Mahoney driving in, trying to get by, but no, it was tipped by Akeem Truhart. Lewis Howard, one bounce pass to Hakeem Truhart. 30 on the shot clock, 103 to go in the first. Trying to go downhill is Truhart, and it's no good. Tate Mahoney on the opposite end, contested, and they'll say last touch by Wilby. Nice job by Joseph Nieves to get a piece of the ball and not realistically get enough to draw the foul. And Tate Mahoney saying he may have been hit. For the officials, Thibodeau, Reeves, and Sheehan said otherwise. Inbounding behind the basket of Wilby is Ludlow. That was O'Neal. O'Neal 
Open from the left side, and it's pure by O'Neal, the freshman. The second made three by Ludlow in the game. It's 15 to nine. The team in blue, the Fairfield Ludlow, 13 and eight. Coming into this game, Lewis Howard, catch and shoot three, a little bit short. Trying to fight for it is Baker, defensively by Watley. Going on the opposite end, right to left on your screen. Charlie Mahoney, back to Tate Mahoney. O'Neal, shot clock is off, down to 19 seconds to go in the first. Mertz to Tate Mahoney, back to Mertz again, guarded by Baker. Back to Mertz, down to seven, down to six. The backdoor cut by Mahoney, no, gets his own rebound. Down to three, down to two, and Beeman with a nice defensive play, and the shot will not even be close. And it's the first quarter has concluded 15 to nine. Ludlow, they lead against Wilby. One exciting first quarter here from Wilby High School. The Division three, round two. We'll be back in just a moment. Back here at Wilby High School, Chris Saunders alongside David Edward Thurl on the camera, live on DET Sports Media, and also on YouTube as well. Fairfield Ludlow leads over Wilby, the three seed, Ludlow the 14 seed, 15 to nine, leading scores through the first quarter. You had four from Charlie Mahoney, and for Wilby, the lone three points coming from Akeem Truhart, and he had two from Beeman, two from Nieves, and two from Baker. Ludlow was one of four from the free throw line. Will be one of one, two made threes by Ludlow. Will be with no threes made. And the second quarter's underway. Beeman with possession of the pumpkin. Now Howard at the top of the key. Guarded by O'Neal. Gets by Mertz, that's true. Hard left side, a little bit too strong. And again, Will be being very cold in terms of their shots. First possession for Ludlow here in the second. Tate Mahoney, the cut left side, and it's good. Again, the freshman, Timmy O'Neill. He's got five, now leads the team in scoring, coming off the bench. And stayed in for the second quarter. As I said, came off the bench late in the first. And Howard loses the basketball. It's the freshman O'Neill, vertical to Tate Mahoney. Mahoney then has it taken away by Nieves. And we'll have a reach in foul by Tate Mahoney. His first, team's first. Team fouls get erased every quarter, but personal fouls do stay. And this is where if you're the Wilby Wildcats, again, having composure. They've been down since the beginning of the game. Closest they've been to is three points. Right now they're down 17 to nine are the Wildcats, the three seed. One minute into this second quarter. Nieves guarded by O'Neal. O'Neal's got five points, leads the team in scoring. A three by Truhart. First made three by the Wildcats. That's six for Akeem Truhart, leads the team in scoring. 17 to 12. The lead is five for Ludlow. O'Neal floats it to Mertz. Back to O'Neal. 3-2 defense for the Wildcats. Tate Mahoney. Good pass to Mertz. Mertz on the weak side. And they'll say he traveled, did Mertz. 6.33 to go in the second. 17 to 12, a five point lead for Ludlow. Started the game with a made three by Tate Mahoney. And they have not looked back since. Got one team foul on Ludlow, none on Wilby here in the second quarter. Wilby had three team fouls in the first. Ludlow only had one. Truar to Howard, contested. Beeman gets the ball back for Wilby. He drives in. Can't get the possible three-point play, but he'll be at the line for two. And the foul will be on number two, Charlie Mahoney. His first, team second. 
Now Ludlow has surpassed what they had in the first quarter in terms of team fouls. They only had one. They said Beeman at the line for two. Started his career at Crosby. Freshman, sophomore year, went to Wilby. His junior and now senior year makes his first of two free throws. Wilby only attempted one free throw in the first quarter. So they'll also surpass what they did in the first quarter with the free throw attempt by Brandon Beeman. Scored his 1,000 point against Seymour in the quarterfinal in the second quarter. Second free throw, good by Beeman. Pure stroke. Beeman now with four. And again, it's been that three-point bugaboo for the Wildcats. They have not been able to get closer than that. 6.08 to go in the second. Howard, it's loose, picked up by Nieves. Will be on the run, left to right in your screen. Truhart going in, and now it's a one-point lead for Fairfield Ludlow. That's eight for Akeem Truhart, the assist, Joseph Nieves. 5.50 to go in the second. 17 to 16, Ludlow. O'Neal, the right elbow side, guarded by Truhart. They give it to Tate Mahoney. The crowd getting loud here at the Ridge O'Brien Gymnasium. Charlie Mahoney, Tate Mahoney gets it to the top. That's O'Neal. O'Neal's wide open for three, a little bit too hard. Howard on the rebound, fights it through. It's picked up high, but there's Akeem Truhart. The Wildcats on the run. Nieves for the lead. No. Cali trying to fight for the ball. It's last touched by Ludlow. And two substitutions coming in for Fairfield Ludlow. And actually, before we even get to that possession by Wilby, a timeout. First one of the game for either side. This one coming from Ludlow. 5.19 to go in the second. It's 17-16. Ludlow is up by one. Five nineteen to go in the second quarter. We got the number three seed, the Wilby Wildcats, and the number fourteen seed, Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. Inbounding are the Wildcats down by one. That was Callie to Trueheart. Trueheart guarded by Jones. Trueheart still with the pumpkin. He lost the basketball. Almost had it picked again. Trueheart's been having a problem in this game, being able to hold on to the basketball. He's had his pocket picked a couple times. It's caused a number of turnovers in the first half of the Wildcats. 5.07 to go in the second. An air ball, or actually didn't even touch, not even air ball, didn't even touch the rim. On transition are Ludlow and the foul. Charlie Jones with two, trying to make it a possible three-point play. And the foul's on Trueheart. You wonder if maybe that's a frustration foul by Trueheart on that three that didn't even touch the rim. 4.59 to go in the second. Three-point lead trying to make it four are the Falcons, and they do. Jones now with five. Ludlow two of five at the line. Howard, mid, they get to Cali. Cali, outside to Nieves. The Falcons being pesky defensively. Cali from the left side, missed the three. Howard on the offensive rebound. Give and go to Beeman. Beeman goes up and he was fouled in the paint. And at the line for two is Brandon Beeman. And the foul's on number 14, Strabina. His first, team's third. So Beeman made both of his free throws early on in the second quarter. First of two, Beeman missed the free throw. First missed free throw by Wilby, they're three of four. Sherbina is out. Also coming in for Wilby as Callie is out. Ryan Morello, the freshman, is in. He came in when Jarena was hurt in the semi against Career. 
4.43 to go in the second. And the free throw missed by Beeman again. So they made their first three and missed their last two. Three of five at the line on the Wildcats. Jones finds Mertz. Horizontal pass guarded by Truhart. 1-4 defense. Now it's a 2-3 defense by Wilby. Jones back to Mertz. Now Jones, 18 on the shot clock. 4.25 to go in the second. Charlie Mahoney to Jones. Jones with a drop step. Back outside, Charlie Mahoney trying to go downhill. Waits patiently, missed the J from the five foot in the paint. Wilby's on the run, left to right near screen in their whites. 4.08 to go in the second. Four point lead for the Falcons of Ludlow in blue. Wilby in white. 23 seconds on the shot clock, under four to play in the second quarter. Beeman brought it down, now swarmed by two, he retreats. The freshman Murillo. Now Nieves will have an offensive foul on Wilby. That's going to be on Lewis Howard. His first, team second. That will be the second offensive foul on Wilby in this first half. The other coming from Junis Bell Luna early on in the first quarter. So Ludlow has on the court here. You got Jones bringing the ball up, followed by Mertz. Both Mahoney's. And Watley. Jones to Tate Mahoney. Three, no, off the front iron. The freshman had the ball for a second, and then a jump ball called on either side. You see right there kind of, again, not being able to box out is Wilby and giving this Ludlow team an opportunity. They've had multiple chances. It almost feels like that this Ludlow team should be up by a little bit more. As Wilby has really struggled with their shooting in this first half. Inbounding are the Falcons, that's Mertz. The Tate Mahoney, only with three points. First team all FCAC talent. Jones, number 10, they feed inside the paint, go outside to Charlie Mahoney, the three is no good. Offensive rebound by the Falcons again. Charlie Mahoney going down, but has pocket picked. Truar on the opposite end, spinning by two, feeds Beeman, Beeman with a rack attack. Beeman with six. And now it's a two-point lead for Ludlow. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. The 14 seed leads the three seed here in round two of the Division Three tournament. Charlie Mahoney goes back outside the Jones. Jones has five. Trying to feed into the paint. Truart then spins and kept it alive. And then a timeout call by Piccolo. What a heads-up play by Wilby as they have possession to call the timeout as Wilby is down by two, 22-18, 2.44 to go in this second quarter. When there was 5.19 to go in the same quarter, Wilby got within one, and that's the closest they've been. It was 17-16, and they had possession of the basketball. And that was before a missed three by Trueheart that, I mean, you can call. I mean, it wasn't an air ball, but it also didn't even touch the rim. It completely went over the rim. Winner of this game will take on either East Haven, the sixth seed, or the 22 seed in Waterford. Divisions one, three, and five are currently playing right now. They will play their quarterfinal games on Monday. Their semis will be on Wednesday. Divisions two and four, they play their quarterfinals tomorrow, and their semis will be on Tuesday. So the Falcons of Ludlow in their blue will have both Mahoney's, Tate and Charlie. Also out for the first time, Martino, the sophomore, getting his first appearance here in the second quarter. And also have Watley, number 11. Wilby has Nieves, Akeem Truhart, Murillo, Luna back in, but he's got to be careful. He's got two personal fouls and Beeman. Wilby down by two. They try to float and Luna basically threw it right to the Falcons. I don't know what he was thinking there. Tate Mahoney trying to make Wilby pay. He does it on the brick. Luna makes the pass, maybe was tipped by the Falcons, and then Truar was fouled with a possible chance for a three-point play. Went up against not one but two players. And the fouls on Tate Mahoney. His first, team's fourth. And Wilby has a chance to get their first lead of the game. If Truar can make the free throw, Wilby has missed their last two free throws. Now Tate Mahoney's taking a seat. And you got to think earlier, I said something about how Truart maybe had some frustration on his shot, and that resulted in him committing a foul. You have right there Mahoney missed the three, and he's been cold. He's, he 
does not really score a lot, only three points. He committed the foul there. For the first lead of the day for Wilby. And Truard doesn't get it, but Padilla fighting for the ball. The jump ball has been called. Possession Wilby. That's Wilby's third consecutive free throw missed after making their first three. Coach Piccolo doing some substitutions. Baker and Padilla are out. Back in are Luna and the freshman Murillo. Inbounding will be Hakeem Truhart. And we're tied 20 all for the first time in this game. Shot clock will reset. Inbounding is Wilby. We're tied at 20. A freshman Murillo back to Nieves. Nieves with the pumpkin. Goes outside. The freshman Murillo missed the three. It goes out of bounds in the left corner. Possession back to the Falcons of Fairfield Ludlow. The 14 seed beat Killingly 58 to 52 to get to this game here at Wilby High School at the Reggie O'Brien Gymnasium in Waterbury, Connecticut. 2.08 to go in the second quarter. We're tied at 20. Low scoring game here in the first half. Jones gives it to Charlie Mahoney. Back to Jones. Jones goes to the left corner. That's Martino. His three is good. Third May three by the Falcons. And Ludlow's back up top by three. 140 to go in this second quarter. Hakeem Juar feeds Beeman. Beeman, the spin, no good. Padilla trying to fight for the ball, but it's last touch by said Padilla. And back over to the Falcons. And John Daly coaching his squad. What a job that he did this year. He's been with the team for 10 years as a head coach, 16 overall in terms of the program in general. What a job by him. Hence why he got the FCAC Coach of the Year this year. 13 and eight coming into this game. First winning season since the COVID year, 2019-2020. Jones regains his Strabina back into the game. Three missed by Ludlow, failure to box out. And we'll have a foul on the floor by Wilby. Their failure to box out is killing them in this first half. And the foul is gonna be on Tyler Padilla. That's gonna be his second team's third. Luna is back in, as well as the freshman Murillo. So you're doing offense, defense a little bit here by Piccolo. 1-11 to go in the second. Jones inbounding. Charlie Mahoney back outside to Strabina. Now Charlie Mahoney. Strabina. Back to Jones, number 10. Charlie Mahoney, number 2. Falcons in their blue, will be in their whites. Three by Mahoney, a little bit short. Beeman trying to fight for the ball. It's last touch by Truhart of Wilby. And again, the more opportunities that you give this Falcons team, you would think at some point they would get hot, or at the very least make you pay. Right now, again, it feels like it should be a higher score. In terms of the rebounding, it's been all really Ludlow in this first half. Charlie Mahoney, guarded by Murillo. Now Strabina. Jones, nice cut by Mahoney in the paint. Missed the bunny. Beeman on the opposite end. Horizontal pass to Truart. 41 seconds to go in the second quarter. Luna goes up, lost the basketball. Back to the Falcons of Ludlow again. Extremely sloppy first half from Wilby, the three seed. They have not played since that semifinal loss to Career a week and a half ago. 29 seconds remaining in the first half. Three-point lead for Ludlow. Jones near the top of the key. Martino, who just made a three to put Ludlow back up top. It's down to 17 seconds. Shot clock is at 14. But a one-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Jones down to seven on the shot clock. Whistle blown. We'll have an offensive foul on Ludlow as the shot clock is turned off. That's a number 14, Strabina, his second. Team's fifth. Inbounding will be the Wildcats with Nieves, Trueheart, Murillo, Beeman, and Luna. And now Tate Mahoney will be coming in for Strabina. Can will be cut the deficit or tie it before half? They have 8.2 seconds remaining in the second quarter to have an answer. They have to hold on to the pumpkin as well. Truhart 
near the top of the key. Nice move by Truart. Truart, left hand, good by Akeem Truart. And Ludlow's lead, which was three, is now down to one. And you think about kind of how sloppy it's been for the Wildcats in this first half. That could possibly be the momentum that they needed going into the second half. But if you're Ludlow at the same time, they have played pretty well on both ends of the floor, more so on the rebounding side offensively and defensively. They've really been able to make plays. And the score at the end of the first half is 23 to 22. We'll take a quick break and we come back. I should be having on for halftime a special guest from UConn Avery Point. Phil Quantate, the former head coach of Derby, also played at Bloomfield. He'll be coming on with me to talk about his time with UConn Avery Point. We'll be back. High school, as you can currently hear right now the drums, so we'll try to scream as much as we can into the mic. Eight minutes to go of this halftime. My name is Chris Saunders, live on DET Sports Media and also on YouTube as well. I've got on with me the UConn Avery Point head coach, former also head coach at Derby and also played at Bloomfield back in the day. Knows a thing or two about winning. Uh, Phil Quan Tate is with me. Phil, I really appreciate you being able to come on a little bit. A absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You know, give me some of your thoughts in the first half, Coach, because it seems like Ludlow should be up by a lot more than what the score says, but also will be too. The turnovers have been a big problem for them. Honestly, when you look at it, uh, Ludlow, they've switched their defense four or five different times. You've seen them play man, you've seen them play a half-court zone, you've seen them play a full-court press, then they drive back into another zone. So I think when they figure out which defense is going to work best, they're going to run with that. Right now they're making shots on offense and they're executing, they're hitting screens as well. But on the other end, All right, now the drumming has stopped for one second, so maybe now we can try to hear you a little bit better. No, I was saying that uh, <laughs> Ludlow, they switch their defense so many times, and they'll think when they figure out which one works best, mm -hmm. then they'll be good. And then on the other side, I think we'll be, you're seeing them get to the rim, and you're seeing them finish it on the rim. As long as they can do that, they should be in good shape. Keep looking for penetration and rebounding, they should be good. You're going to have to execute down the stretch, though. <laughs> It's almost like the drums, we can barely hear each other. Try to even, you know, get a halftime interview, right? <laughs> you know what, man? You love this about high school basketball. This is what makes it an experience for everybody. That's it. It's a 
we'll just wait one more second, see if we can wait until the drums maybe stop. They're doing a great job, by the way, with the drums, I have to tell you. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Ooh, it's <good. laughs> Now, Phil Kwan, they do this after every, not after, but they do it at halftime and at the end of the games. They the Will Be drum line always comes out, and they always perform well. This is why Will Be's the whole team, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Trust me, they're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> they're not done. I've seen them go for 15 minutes straight at the end of a game. <laughs> <laughs> Do they add time to work <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe this is a strategy, right? Wow. Against the opposing team. Let's play as loud as we can. So that way we can't hear what our coach is saying in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they just keep going. And now that we can actually hear each other, great job by the bands of the Wilby High School, uh, the Wildcats. You know, Coach, looking at the spread out, right, looking at both of these teams, Ludlow has a well-balanced amount of scoring. Even though Mahoney, who has scored a lot of points in his career with the Falcons, only has three, but he's got players picking him up. His younger brother, Charlie's got four. You got Jones with five. You got three from Watley. Off the bench, you have the freshman O'Neal with five. You got Martino with three. You know, Mertz has made some plays defensively too. The Wildcats, while they also have some players spread out with points, Truart leads the team with 12, then you got Beeman with six, but they're not getting much from anybody else. And I almost wonder, is that well-balanced attack of Lullo another factor against the Wildcats too? It could be, but it's one of those things where it's like, I think, if you look at it, Wilby's getting the ball to the middle of the floor. Okay. And Trusha, True, in yeah. particular, once he's getting downhill, they're not really doing anything about it. That's why they keep switching that zone, and they're switching their defense trying to mitigate the penetration. Mm -hmm. They can keep spread out their scoring, but they have to get stops on defense, and they have to stop giving up so many second-chance opportunities yeah. around the rim. Most of the opportunities and baskets made by Wilby are all putbacks and layups. They're not really making jump shots right now. So they have to figure that side out, and then they can worry about their offense. But you have to get stops to win this game. You can't just trade baskets going back and forth. And like you said too, Coach, I think the one thing that, again, in the amount of games I've seen, I've obviously seen coaching adjustment where they'll switch different defenses. But the amount that Ludlow does, it's, it's almost like every single possession, like you said, they'll do man, they'll do trap, they'll do zone. Uh, on and on and on. I mean, they keep showing you different looks, and that could be also another reason why the turnovers have been such a high clip for Wilby. I agree with that, and it's interesting because Wilby hasn't came out of this matchup zone that they're in. It's like an extended 3-2, and they're passing people through. Their kids are doing a really good job of communicating through the screens and talking through so they can't execute that well. But I definitely agree with you. Wilby, if they can just slow it down, and just execute, just pass through instead of trying to dribble through. It'll make it an easier way for them to execute their offense, and they can keep getting the types of shots that they've been looking for. 
I've been really impressed with Ludlow in this first half. First time seeing them. Now watching on film is one thing, but caught, you know, talking with Coach Daly just a couple days ago, he, he's a wonderful coach. I mean, you don't get Coach of the Year for being an okay coach. He's one of the best ones in the state. And, you know, his kids have bought into him. And, you know, they may not score the 80, 90, 100 points that everybody seems like they do nowadays. But schematically, strategically, drawing plays up, playing defense, that carries no matter where you go. And we've seen that from the first half from the Falcons. Absolutely. And a testament to his coaching ability is seeing how well his kids execute his offense and how well they switch on defense and how easy they can switch between defenses. That shows that they are an extension of him mentally Correct. and they work well together on the field. Bill Kwan, I really appreciate you coming on. Hopefully you enjoyed the band and being able to, you know, have a conversation, you know, conversation with me a little bit. Absolutely, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the game. That was Phil Quan Tate, part of the UConn Avery Point program. And he does a fine job there, was the head coach at Derby for a little bit and also played at Bloomfield as well. As we get into the third quarter, it's 23 to 22. The Falcons of Fairfield Ludlow lead. They came into this game 13 and eight. The Wildcats 17 and five will be the three seed. Ludlow the 14 seed. Closest that the Wildcats have been is tied, and we've been tied once, 2020, with 2.21 to go in the second quarter. Otherwise, it's been Ludlow leading for basically majority of this game. And Ludlow starts the second quarter, rather the second half, with the basketball. Tate Mahoney's three is good. Both shots made by Tate Mahoney have been threes. He's got six, and it's now a four-point lead for the Falcons of Ludlow. We'll be going right to left on your screen. Ludlow defending in their blue, left to right, they'll be attacking. Nieves to Luna, they feed Beeman, and a hold by Ludlow. And that's gonna be on Jones, number 10, his first. Teams first to begin the second half, the third quarter to be exact. 7.29 to go in the third. A three made by Mahoney, just as he did in the first quarter. He's got six total points. Truhart. Made a basket before the end of the second quarter. Two at the time with Luna traveling. And made the lead for Ludlow only one. And also was able to increase with a three by Mahoney, the first team all FCAC talents. Inbounding will be Strabina. Jones closes by. You've got Tate Mahoney, Charlie Mahoney, and Watley. The other three for the Falcons. Watley goes outside to Charlie Mahoney. He spins to Tate Mahoney. Back to Charlie Mahoney. Mahoney, Sherbina, Tate Mahoney again. Swing around patiently are the Falcons. Sherbina lost the basketball, had his pocket picked again. Beam into Truhart. Truhart, the 10 foot J is no good. Fighting for the ball is Luna, but he stepped out of bounds. Under seven to play in this third quarter. It's a four point lead for Fairfield Ludlow as Sherbina is out. Back in is Mertz. Played most of the first and the second quarter. As you see, John Daly, the FCAC Coach of the Year, 10th year as the head coach, 16 total with the program. Cheering on his squad. First winning season for Lolo since the COVID year when they went 16 and four. Watley. And we'll have a foul on the floor. That's going to be on Nieves. That's his first, team's first to begin the third. It's been nine years since Ludlow has been to a quarterfinal. Back in 2015, for Wilby, they have not won a playoff game in the States since 2016, eight years. Mertz, back outside to Jones. Jones on the drive, spinning through is Watley, and we're going to have a foul on the floor, and that's on Ludlow, or no, actually, Correction, not a foul, but a travel by Ludlow. So Wilby has the basketball, mid not three fourths on the Ludlow side, right to left on your screen. Nieves, back to Beeman. 6.26 to go in the third. Truart leads the team in scoring with 12. Wilby yet to score in this third quarter. As you see again, the defense by Ludlow kind of confusing the Wildcats a little bit, as they did in the first half. Howard in the corner, back to Truart. Truart feeds Beeman, and Beeman again for his second dunk of the game. He's got eight. And it's back to a two-point lead for Ludlow. 
And then the pass by Lulo, and I don't think Tate Mahoney was even looking or anticipating the pass as Jones kind of just threw it away. Now Jones is going to take a seat. As you see Coach Daly talking with Jones. Always coaching is Jones, or rather Crescent, always coaching is Daly into the game. Three by Beeman is missed off the outside of the rim. Luda fighting for it, gets the ball. Here goes Beeman again. Second chance by Wilby. Nieves three is going to be missed. That's Luna again. It's loose and then retained by Ludlow. Chris Dodero is in for Ludlow. Somehow able to keep it alive, but they threw it right to Wilby. The Wildcats on the run. That's Truro going up, and he gets it and counted for a possible three-point play as you hear the crowd going loud again. And the foul is going to be on Tate Mahoney, his third, team second. And this is the second time that Truhart will be at the line for a chance to put Wilby up for the first time in the game. Tried in the second quarter, but missed the free throw. As we're tied also for the second time in the game. As I said before, 5.24 to go in the third. A free throw by Truhart is no good three of seven are the wildcats so again we stay tied so the wildcats have not led this entire game chris Dodero as a timeout was called by ludlow Their first time out here in the third 515 remaining in said quarter it's 26 all here from the ridge o'brien gymnasium division three round two the winner will advance to the quarterfinal to be played on monday take on either west haven correction east haven or waterford on the floor for the Wildcats. Beeman, Luna, Nieves, Howard, and Trueheart. As we are tied for the second time in the game, we've been tied one other time back in the second quarter with 2.21 to go, 20 all. Ludlow will have on the court Charlie Mahoney, Chris Dodero. Also will have Mertz, Martino, and Watley. Chris Dodero to Mertz, guarded by Nieves. Mertz, still with the basketball, guarded by Nieves, down to 16 on the shot clock. Game clock at five remaining in the third. This crowd is getting loud here at the Reggio O'Brien Gymnasium. And the shot is somehow good by Mertz. I don't know if he meant to do that, but it worked. Ludlow back up top by two. 4.50 remaining in the third. Trueheart floater a little bit too, I don't want to call weak, but maybe not strong enough on that right low post side. Ludlow retains their lead for now. They're up by two. 4.38 remaining in the third. Mertz in the paint. They go outside. The three is going to be maybe tipped. Hard to say exactly from that angle, but either way, it didn't go in. But it stays with Ludlow inbounding. It'll be Chris Dodero behind the Wilby basket. 4.30 remaining in the third. Chris Dodero outside to Mahoney. Mahoney, nice spin move. And it's going to be off of Mahoney. And during the timeout, I was actually reading a text from a coach that was complimenting, and it's true. Lolo's defense has been basically spectacular in this game. Luna missed. Beeman on the putback, and we're tied yet again. That's 10 for Beeman. And it's 28 all with 4-12 remaining in the third. Three ties in this game. 20, 26, and 28. And Howard gets the tip back to Luna. Luna floats it high to Beeman. Beeman to Trueheart. Under four to play in the third. Hard pass to Beeman. Beeman against the trees. No, trying to fight for the ball. And nice defensive play by Watley in the paint. As we stay tied, 28 all. 
3.45 remaining in the third. Charlie Mahoney to Chris Dodero. Now Mertz guarded by Nieves. Chris Dodero to Mertz. Mertz on the drive, the right hand a little bit off the back side, or rather the front side of the rim. So the Miss J in the paint. Wilby has a chance for their first lead of the game. Howard trying to feed to Trueheart. Trueheart back outside to Nieves. Nieves floats it to Beeman. 20 on the shot clock. That's Howard. And we'll have a travel by Howard. And again, we stay tied. Wilby yet to come away with their first lead. As Ludlow has led this entire game or for the three times, been tied with the Wildcats, the three seed. Ludlow, the 14 seed. Mahoney, one dribble. Mahoney goes up. Swerve through the defense, did Mahoney. He's got six. It's back up to a two-point lead for Ludlow. Under three to play in the third. Nieves. Horizontal pass to Howard, now Beeman. Beeman, one dribble. Floats it to Howard at the top of the key. Now Nieves gives it to Beeman. Trueheart gets by one. The floater, no good, off the right side in the right low post. 235 remaining in the third. A two-point lead for Ludlow. Mahoney, Chris Dodero trying to make it five. He can't there, missed three off the back iron. And a defensive rebound by Lewis Howard. Nieves on the opposite end, driving in against two. And the foul is going to be called on the floor. That's on Ludlow, their third. Call that on Watley, that's his second. As I said, team's third. Inbounding is Nieves behind the Falcon basket. Luna in the corner. They help him out with Beeman. Beeman, the J, no good. Schuart, offensive rebound, goes up high. No, trying to put up again. No, defense by Ludlow has been spectacular in this game. Stays a two-point lead for Ludlow. Had a pick, but goes back to the Falcons. There's the Darrow to Mahoney. Mahoney to Mertz. There's the Darrow, back to Mertz again. 17 on the shot clock. Mahoney dribbles once, contested, does not matter. Mahoney, make it eight for Charlie Mahoney, the third team all FCAC. 1.38 to go in the third. Four point lead for the Falcons of Ludlow, the 14 seed. Luna in the corner to Howard from the left corner. Is good. It's a nice shot by Lewis Howard, his first main basket. And it's a one-point lead for Ludlow. Only the second made three by Wilby in the game. Mahoney back to Chris Dodero. Three-fourths of the core on the side of Wilby. Left to right screen, the Falcons are attacking in their blue. The 14 C 13 and eight coming into this game. Truhart fakes out Chris Dodero. Or correction, Chris Dodero fakes out Truhart, I should say. Watley gives it to Mahoney, down to 12 on the shot clock. Under a minute to play in the third. Mertz to Mahoney. Mahoney, Chris Dodero, outside of Mertz. He'll try for three. That's going to be a foul called on Wilby. And that was an air ball too. And Wilby would have had the ball back. <laughs> Fouls on Beeman, that's his first of the game. Team second. That will be Martino. And for the first time is Jake Medor, a senior. Chris Dodero inbounding behind the Wilby basket. Chris Dodero gets it to Watley. Watley outside. Lador back to Chris Dodero. Nice cut and the basket made. That's Mertz. He's got four all coming in this third quarter. The lead is three for Ludlow. Down to 30 seconds to go in the third. Shot clock is at 27. Three team fouls for Ludlow, two for Wilby. We've had three ties in this game, 20, 26, and 28. Beeman shot off the front iron, no good. Shot clock is off, down to 14 seconds remaining in the third. As John Dale is putting up the number one, saying one shot, one final shot. Mertz, who's got four points in this third, and Nieves committed the foul. Team's third, Nieves is second. Four point five seconds remaining in the third. Yeah, 
Inbounding will be Mertz. For Ludlow. Mahoney down to three. Mahoney down to two. Mahoney down to one. Hucks it up high. And it's going to be no good. Didn't even come close to the rim. As we are through three. In the Division Three round two. State tournament game is 34-31. The Wildcats are down by three. Back here at the Reggio O'Brien Gymnasium in Waterbury, Connecticut. Potentially the fourth and last quarter. Both these teams vying for a quarterfinal appearance. For Fairfield, the first time since the 2015 season, if they can get there. For Will be looking for their first tournament win since 2016. And looking to get to a quarterfinal since 2013. 34-31, Ludlow leads by three. We've had three ties, 20, 26, and 28. For the first three quarters for Wilby, you got 14 from Truhart. For Ludlow, you have eight from Charlie Mahoney. Truhart lost the basketball. He's able to retain it and pick it up. Luna to Nieves, Nieves to Beeman. Beeman from the right side, the J is no good. Luna trying to fight for the ball. He comes away with it, the offensive rebound. Luna goes up and was hit, and he makes the basket in the left low post, and Luna, his first made basket. The lead is down to one for Ludlow. As the full court presses on, but Ludlow breaks it. Tate Mahoney working through. Ludlow lost the basketball. It's Nieves. Nieves trying to make the pass. It's picked up by Beeman. Beeman goes up. It's no good. Then Luna falls with the basketball and trying to call a timeout. But they're going to say that he was out of bounds. Or a correction before I even say that. Wilby was able to get the timeout called as Luna had possession. But the fight by Junis Bell Luna, who had two personal fouls early on in the first quarter, being able to keep that awareness and that toughness to be able to get the board. And Lolo has a one point lead. But again, going back to, you know, let's give credit where credit's due. You know, we got to give Lolo their flowers. They defensively have been able to confuse this Wilby team, which for about a good 70 to 75% of the season averaged over 80 points a game. And they've held this Wilby team to 33 points through three quarters and about a minute and over a minute and 50 seconds, or not a minute and 50, but over just about a minute going into this fourth quarter. 7.16 to go in the game, 34-33. Ludlow is up by one. Wilby has not led in this entire game. Luna in the corner. Luna gets it to Howard. Now Truhart. Truhart with the pump fake. Truhart gives it to Nieves. The right side, it's an air ball. Beeman's right there, and the putback is good by Brandon Beeman. And Wilby has their first lead of the game. It's 35-34. Ludlow with a four-court press by Wilby. They get it by Medor to Castadero. Now Mahoney. Mahoney's wide open for three. He missed the three to the hands of Nieves. 6.47 to go in the game. Wilby on the run. They go outside to Lewis Howard for three. No, it's a little bit short. Defensive rebound by Watley of Ludlow. And then Chuar takes it away. But they'll say that he traveled. And the crowd does not like that here at the Reggio O'Brien Gymnasium. And this is what you think about with state tournament games. It is loud in this gym, and you have to love it. Charlie Mahoney, right hand floater, no good. Watlin, the offensive rebound. Chuart on the swat. He is able to make the block in the right low post. 
Beeman on the opposite end. Goes outside to Howard. Howard then regains his possession and throws it right to Ludlow. That's Castadero. Castadero makes a quick pass to Mahoney. Mahoney, and it's an offensive foul on Mahoney. That's his fourth. Teams first here in the fourth. And that's going to, you know, that will force Mahoney out for probably most of this game. Or at least the remainder of the fourth. One more and he'll be done. Only has six points total. Back in is Shrabina. Inbounding will be Trueheart to Nieves. You've got Beeman, Howard, and Junis Belluna. Will be with their first lead. 35-34. Akeem Trueheart to Lewis Howard, back to Trueheart. Now Nieves. Beeman outside the three-point line. Akeem Trueheart. Pump fakes it to Howard. Now Howard. The three is no good. Beeman trying to get the ball. He won't. That's Charlie Mahoney. And then Truart for a second. He touched it. Here goes Mahoney. Opposite end. Mahoney with a spin move. Mahoney can't make the bunny. It's going to be off of Fairfield. And John Daly just putting his hands on his head in frustration. The amount of opportunities. And let's be fair. Both teams have had opportunities and have not been able to cash them in. Neither team's been really wanting to have true command of the game either. Especially for Wilby, they just took their first lead and it took until under seven minutes in this fourth quarter to get their first lead, 35-34. 20 on the shot clock, Hakeem Truhart, the long range two, a little bit too hard. It's off of then Truhart, Truhart falling right on top of it and they'll call, no they won't call a jump ball, they'll continue to let it play and then Nieves was hit on the head. The foul will be on the Ludlow. That's Castadero. Castadero's first, team second. We'll have a timeout call by Wilby with 5:14 remaining in the game. 35-34. Wilby leads by one. As you can tell, we're stationed right now about just shy of midcourt. You've got the Ludlow fans on the right side. They definitely brought the student section. Then you've got Wilby and the parents to our left of us, and basically everybody else also have the uh, cheerleaders as well as they cheer on the Wildcats. Winner of this game will take on East Haven or Waterford. That game will be played on Monday in the quarterfinal. What's on the line for both of these teams? Ludlow looking to get to a quarterfinal since 2015. And for the Wildcats, they're trying to win their first state tournament game since 2016. They're looking to get past the second round since 2013. Alan Piccolo, John Daly, two of the better coaches in the state. Daly being a part of Ludlow for 16 years. Piccolo been at Wilby for a long, long time, coaching at the Reggie O'Brien Gymnasium, the gym named after the legendary coach Reggie O'Brien. Coached at Wilby for many, many, many years. Wilby will have on the court Howard, Trueheart, Nieves, Luna, and Beeman. And Ludlow, the 14 C, will have on the court Mahoney, Strabina. Also, we'll have Jones back into the game, Mertz, and Watley. 514 remaining in the game, 35 on the shot clock. Hakeem Trueheart, number five, the transfer from Kennedy. Hakeem Trueheart, an offensive foul on Wilby. That's Judas Bell Luna. His third, team's first. That's the third offensive foul on Wilby. Two of them coming from Judas Bell Luna. Got to keep your composure, young man. This game is far from over. Sherbina gives it to Jones. Now Mertz, a little bit of a trap by Wilby. Floating out to Jones. They get it to Mahoney. Back to Mertz. Mertz outside the three-point line. The Falcons in their blue going left to right on your screen. The 14 seed. They're down by one. Mahoney, number two, the third team all FCAC talent. A little bit of a trap. Mahoney gets by Truart. Truart has it picked. Truart regains. Truart mid now three forwards. Truart going up with the left hand. Strong by Akeem Truart. He's got 16. 4.38 to go in the game. It's a three point lead for Wilby. They throw it up high to Mahoney. The Falcons with Jones. Right side is Watley. And Watley will make it in the right low post. And Watley was maybe hit in that side as well. The lead is down to one for Wilby. 4.20 to go in the game. Howard 
They feed to Luna. Luna to Beeman. Beeman then lost the basketball. The Falcons have a chance to regain the lead. Shrabina back to Mertz. Shrabina trying to make a hard pass to Watley. And then Akeem Chur and Watley both fighting for the ball. The jump ball has been called. And now John Daly going to a risky, risky thing right here. Tate Mahoney with four personal fouls. One more and he's done. But hey, if you're going to go down or if you're going to win, you need your best player on the floor. Tate Mahoney is that. Four minutes to go in the game. An errant pass by the Falcons. And then Howard looking and finds Chuhar on that right side. They floated to Beeman. Beeman, uncontested three, is no good. Charlie Mahoney on the defensive rebound. Under four to play in the game. Jones gets by Howard. Mid now three forts on the Wilby side. Jones with Truhart guarding. 3.40 to go in the game. Watley back to Jones. Now Mertz guarded by Nieves. Mertz floats it to Watley at the top of the key. 15 on the shot clock. 3.30 to go in the game. Ludlow down by one. 37-36. And we'll have a foul on Charlie Mahoney. Foul will be on Truhart trying to contest the shot. His second. Team second. Mahoney at the line for two. Missed his only two free throw attempts in the first quarter. As Lolo did not attempt any free throws in the third. They're two of five total. Missed their first three free throws. First of two. No good by Mahoney. So the best that Lolo can do here if they make the free throw is tie it. Two of six. If Wilby is to win this game, they will host on Monday in the quarterfinal. Mahoney's second free throw is good. And he ties the game for the fourth time, 37 all. Three of seven at the line are the Falcons of Lolo. Beeman outside to Trueheart. Truhart, 310 to go in the game. We've had four ties, 20, 26, 28, and 37. Truhart taking some air out of the basketball. Three minutes to go in the game. The pick by Luna. They go outside to Nieves. Now Howard from the left side. He's made one three, missed their three there. Trying to fight for the ball is Truhart, and Truhart puts it up with both hands. That's 18 for Akeem Truhart. It's 39-37. We'll be back up by two. 2.45 to go in the game. Truart trying to reach in to get the steal. They go back to Mahoney. Mahoney then has it taken away by Truart. Will be on the run. They feed it over to Luna. And Luna will finish in the right low post. Luna now with four as you hear the crowd going wild here at Wilby High School. This is why you love state tournament games. A back and forth affair between both Wilby, the three seed, and the 14 seed in Ludlow. And then you have a foul called on the floor on Jones as he fouled Truart. His second, team's third. And you wonder about the emotion right now as the crowd, and you can even hear it through my mic. You may not even be able to hear me through my mic. It's 41 to 37. Wilby leads, 219 remaining in the game. Three team fouls on Ludlow, two on Wilby. Inbounding is Nieves. We've had four ties in the game, 20, 26, 28, 37. Hakeem Truhart, Jones closes by. Hakeem Truhart with a lane. Hakeem Truhart with the left hand, and it's no good. And it stays 41-37 will be. Jones on the opposite end. Jones with an open lane, feeds Watley, and Watley was then fouled by Nieves for a possible three-point play. Nieves is third, team's third. And Watley at the line, as I said, for a three-point play. As the lead is down to two for Wilby. 2.03 to go in the game. Wally with four points in this fourth quarter, more than he had in the first three quarters. Trow trying to make him miss a free throw, he doesn't. Ice in his veins, four of eight. As well, a timeout called. Will be 41, Ludlow 40, 2.03 to go. And this is only the second round game. You can only imagine what the rest of the tournament's gonna look like. Here in the Division Three portion, there are five divisions, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'll let you hear the crowd. The 
And now the Ludlow crowd trying to say, let's go Ludlow. And now here goes, let's go Wilby. 2.03 to go in the game. 41 to 40, Wilby leads by one. score for Ludlow is nine from Charlie Mahoney. You've got 18 for Truart of Wilby. 2.03 to go in the game. One point lead for the Wildcats. And you got a 2-2-1 defense from Ludlow. They give it to Hakeem Truhart. Will be up by one. They find Howard. Howard to Nieves. Now they drop to a 2-3 defense. Nieves down to under two remaining in the game. Nieves gives it to Trueheart. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 1.48 to go in the fourth quarter. A one point lead for Wilby. Howard back to Trueheart. They're taking some air out of the basketball. John Daly jumping up high, making sure everybody knows their defensive assignment. Down to eight, down to seven, down to six, down to five. They feed it to Beeman. Beeman to Luna, down to one. They don't know how much was left on the shot clock, and the shot clock has gone off. A turnover by Wilby. And Lolo with a chance to regain the lead as they're down by one with 1.27 to go in the game. Mertz will give it to Jones. Jones at midcourt. Jones pointing to Charlie Mahoney. Guarded by Luna. Mahoney to Watley. Now Jones, he floats it up high. Nice cut by Mahoney, and he'll get it in the left low post. What a play by Charlie Mahoney. Ludlow regains the lead, they're up by one. 42 to 41. The 14 seed is leading the three seed. Wilby, down to under a minute remaining in the game. Truhart will dribble with his left hand, go between the legs. Beeman, near the top of the key. Beeman, back to Luna, 17 on the shot clock. Hakeem Truhart, driving in. Truhart goes over the left hand, no. Luna trying to put back up, he can't. And Jones will hold it up high. 37 seconds to go in the game. 30 on the shot clock. Jones gets by Trueheart. It's a one point lead for Ludlow. And a timeout called by Ludlow. The shot clock will be at 26. The game clock at 30. Now Jones is down at midcourt. Forty-two to forty-one. And Jones is still down. A go-ahead basket was by Charlie Mahoney. Jones seems to be okay, holding his mouth. Good to see that he's able to get up under his own power. 30.1 remaining in the game. It's a one-point lead for Ludlow. Each team with three team fouls. You think about this game as in a microcosm, right? From a from a macro standpoint, or a micro standpoint, I should say. It will be is to lose this game. You think about the, the shot clock violation and then the true heart missed basket. He took it himself, tried to go downhill, went with the left hand, and unsuccessful on the bunny in the paint. A three would put Ludlow. Up by four. And a two would only put Ludlow up by three. So Wilby would have an opportunity. I would think if there will be, you know, if, if you know, I'm just thinking if, if I'm Coach Piccolo and obviously you want to hold them to not making a basket, you want to have the final shot to either come away. I mean, a made basket, if Ludlow does not score here, would win you the game potentially depending on how much time. Or at the very least would be the go-ahead basket. If you're Ludlow, you've got to try to find any which way. They have been able to work on both ends of the floor. I've been very impressed by Lolo on both the offensive and defensive side. Mertz inbounding the ball. Tate Mahoney back in. They give it to O'Neal, the freshman. O'Neal guarded by Nieves, and Nieves commits the foul. That's his fourth. Team's fourth. One more, and Lolo will be at the line for two. 22 on the shot clock, 26 on the game clock remaining in the game. One point lead for Ludlow. Mahoney, then swarmed by Nieves. 
And that's Nieves' fifth. He's done. Interesting that he was the one to commit the fouls to us. He's able to shoot a three when needed. Although he has not made a three in this game at all. And now will be. Here will be fan hoping for missed free throws. If you're Ludlow, you make your free throws, you put as Murillo's in for true heart regression. Murillo's in for Nieves, I should say. And at the line will be the freshman, Timmy O'Neill. You talk about baptism by fire. This freshman has a chance to put Lolo up by a healthy margin. Both free throws, if made, could put them up by three. First of two by O'Neal. He bends and shoots, and it's no good. The freshman misses the free throw, four of nine. So at best, the made free throw would put Lolo up by two. 24.8 to go in the game. 42-41, Ludlow. Second free throw is good. The freshman makes it, five of 10. It's a two-point lead for Ludlow. The shot clock is off, down to 20 seconds remaining in the game. True Hearts near the top of the key. They give it to Luna. Luna goes up, and it's no good, but they call a blocking foul on Ludlow. And at the line for two is Luna. And that's on Mahoney, and his day is done. He'll finish with six. And that could be extremely costly, especially when you consider that if this game does go into overtime, Lolo will not have their first team all FCAC talent in Mahoney, Tate Mahoney, the senior. As Strabina is back into the game. And Luna at the line. What could be going through the mind of Junis Balluna? Playing for the injured Jarina. And now he's at the line for two free throws. Both with tie. Banks shot the free throw. <laughs> Hello. Makes the first. And maybe that can calm down Luna as he puts both of his hands together in a prayer after that made free throw. This would tie it. The second free throw is no good. And Mahoney gets the quick foul as Ludlow is up by one. Luna missed the second free throw, four of nine at the line. Now at the line for two is Mahoney, Charlie Mahoney, who leads the team in scoring with 11. First free throw is good by Mahoney. Six of 11. Ludlow's up by two. This made free throw would make it three. Big free throw for Mahoney, and he doesn't make it. Howard on the defensive rebound, gives it to Luna. Wilby is down by two. They throw it outside, the freshman Murillo missed the three. Howard on the offensive rebound, no on the putback, it's still up high, and Ludlow, for the first time since 2015, is heading to the quarterfinal. They upset the number three seed Wilby as they storm the court. What a game and what a win for the Ludlow Falcons. They make the defensive play to halt the Wilby Wildcats. They had two chances, a three and a miss, two at the paint, and they were unsuccessful. This win could be one of the biggest ones for Ludlow in some years as they upset the number three seed, the Wilby Wildcats. What a game. The 14 seed, Ludlow, moves on. And they'll play in the quarterfinal on Monday against either East Haven or Waterford. And for the Wildcats, their season and the drought continues. They will go nine years without a tournament win and 12 years without getting to a quarterfinal. The final 44 to 42. The Falcons, they win. What a game. And you think about the made free throws by Charlie Mahoney. 
Finished the day with 12 points, but I mean, I think the MVP was the defense of Fairfield Lolo. What they were able to do defensively to cause Wilby the amount of chaos as they did. They held a team who averaged very closely to 80 points in majority of their games. They held them. And for the Wildcats, for the seniors, Trueheart, Jarena, who did not play because of his injury, Beeman, Howard, Nieves, Luna, Padilla, and everybody else. What a career. Best of luck the rest of their way. But this night belongs to Fairfield Ludlow. This win puts it now 14 and eight. They head to a quarterfinal. They'll be taking on East Haven or Waterford. As you can look upon Charlie Jones with what looked to be something in his nose as may have been a little bit bloody. I mean, hey, they never said the games were going to be easy. And this one was not by any means. Sweat and blood left on this court. The final here, 44-42, will be. They fall to the 14th seed Ludlow. They advance to the quarterfinal. For everyone on YouTube, thank you so much for being able to watch this game live on YouTube on DET Sports Media. For David Everthorough, I'm Chris Saunders. So long and enjoy the rest of your night, everybody.